Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed, and today we're going to be going over second degree AV blocks, and specifically type 1 AV blocks. These are also known as Winky Bach. I may have spelled that wrong. They're also known as Mobitz 1 AV blocks. And second degree AV blocks are um, kind of the middle block. We have first degree, second degree, and third degree. And so, um, by the way, if you want to, go ahead down into this description and download these PDFs of these ECGs if you want to follow along. So, second degree AV blocks, let's get back to what we were saying. So, second degree AV blocks means that, kind of the layman's terms, some, but not all, P waves conduct to the QRS complex. That's just the general description and definition of a second degree, right? But a second degree type one is a certain pattern. And let's talk a little bit about the physiology of a second degree type one. And then as we talk about the physiology, we can talk about the diagnostic criteria. So if I look at this diagram of a heart here, we said in the first degree AV block video that we have two structures that are associated with the AV junction. Okay, we've got, first we have the AV node itself, right, and this is represented here, this little ball, that's the AV node, and then two, you've got the His bundle, and the His bundle is this little strip of conducting fibers that um, form, that exit the AV node, that send signal down into the ventricles. And the AV node itself is what is responsible for the slowing of the signal that produces our PR interval, right? It slows the signal down typically by 120 to 200 milliseconds, which is why our PR interval usually is that little bit of a delay, right? And that tells us that the AV node is slowing the signal down. And then it passes it, continues to pass it through the junction to the His bundle. The His bundle doesn't slow it down. The His bundle is all or nothing, meaning that if the His bundle is healthy and it receives signal from the AV node, it will pass it down. And if it's not healthy, then it won't pass it down. But it won't change the speed. So no change to the PR interval if the His bundle is diseased. And that's going to be kind of in the next AV block series. But in second degree type 1, so in second degree type 1 blocks, there is progressive disease of the AV node proper itself. So this region right here, the anatomy is really important. Okay, And so the AV node, at really, really fast rates, so when the rate increases, so maybe, for example, the sinus node is sending lots of signals down to the AV node. Usually with fast rates, we actually get something called decremental, decremental conduction. And decremental conduction means that the PR interval, the AV node, slows down. But that only happens at fast rates. But what happens is, when the AV node gets diseased enough, this starts to happen at slower rates. And then it can happen so much that it actually drops a beat. And so a second degree type one block means that my, with every single beat at baseline, my PR interval will increase. And so we are essentially seeing decremental conduction at a baseline. And so second degree type one blocks, what you'll see is an increasing PR interval in consecutive beats until we have a dropped QRS, until there is a dropped beat. And then what you'll notice is after that beat drops, then the whole cycle resets, 
right? Because the AV node has time to recover because it had extra beat that it dropped. And so um, that means if we see this pattern that we have disease of the organic AV node itself, not the His bundle. And we'll talk about why that's important in a little bit. And so let's take a look at an ECG here that's got this pattern. So we see we have something here. First thing you notice, so we've got a narrow complex rhythm, narrow complex beats, but there's something here called group beating, right? You see how all these beats are just groups of two? You'll see oftentimes in second degree type one, something called group beating. And why does group beating occur? Well, let's take a look at this strip in detail. And we'll look here down here in lead two, and you'll see we've got a P wave that conducts to the QRS, and that PR interval looks to be about normal, right? It's just about my PR interval for that beat is 200 milliseconds. So the AV node took 200 milliseconds. It delayed the signal by 200 milliseconds to conduct to that QRS. Then we have a P wave that conducts to this QRS. But if you notice, my PR interval has increased. My PR interval is no longer 200. It's like 200 and maybe 40 milliseconds. So with each consecutive beat, my AV node has gotten worse. And so it's showing us, this is example of that decremental conduction. The problem is, is that it's doing it at a baseline, and that's not good. And then you notice that the next P wave does not conduct to a QRS, it gets blocked. So this P wave doesn't conduct to a QRS. And then the next beat starts again, it resets. So we have a P wave that conducts to a QRS with a PR interval of 200 milliseconds. Then we have a P wave that conducts to a QRS with a PR interval that's longer. This one looks like it's 240 milliseconds. And then we have a P wave that gets dropped. And so you get this cycle where we have P to QRS, P, QRS, and then a drop, right? And so we see this pattern of the PR interval is lengthening, lengthening, lengthening until it drops. And so not every P wave conducts to a QRS, so we know it's a second degree AV block. And because the PR interval is increasing every time, we know that it's a type 1 second degree AV block. And that's because the disease that this person's AV node has is organic. This block is organic to the AV node. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Here we have, notice we've got some narrow complex beats, and then we've got this kind of pause, and then we have narrow, 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 and then we've got another pause, and then it resumes narrow, narrow, narrow. We see here, if I look, we've got a P wave that conducts to the QRS, and that PR interval is a little bit long. It looks maybe to be 240 milliseconds. Then we have another P wave that conducts to the QRS, but it looks a little bit longer than 240 milliseconds. It looks like it's maybe, I don't know, we'll call it 300 milliseconds. And then we have a P wave again that conducts to the QRS even longer. That looks like it's 400 milliseconds. And then look, we've got this P wave right here that conducts to this QRS at like 480 milliseconds. And then the last P wave, you can see it just hiding out right there in that T wave. And look, that P wave gets blocked. And then what happens? It resets. And we have the cycle starts all over again where the PR is increasing, increasing, increasing until it maybe blocks again, right? You can see it even happening in the strip before where the PR interval is getting longer and longer until this one drops. And so you can see there's that evidence of the group beating, right? You can kind of see this is the only full group that we see. And there's, there's our group beating. And so you can see that the AV node just gets decremental with every single beat until it drops. And so this is, again, a second degree type 1 AV block, right? Because the disease is within the AV node itself, which intrinsically has those characteristics of decremental conduction. Okay, last example that we'll show you here 
is one where you don't see group beating, but you see there is this narrow complex rhythm that's going until there's this pause. And then you see that narrow complex rhythm resume again. If you look over here, you can see my narrow complex rhythm has a PR interval that is initially right at the upper limit of normal. We'll call this a 200 millisecond PR interval. So it's on the upper limit of normal. And then you see we have another PR interval that seems to be the same. But if you notice, as time goes on, it is slowly lengthening, right? Look at this PR interval. That's maybe 300 or so milliseconds, right? So you're seeing this slow increase in the PR interval. A lot slower than our other rhythms, but it's still getting slower. It's still getting slower. And then we have a P wave that does not conduct, right? There's our P wave that doesn't conduct. And then you notice that the, the AV node recovers because it has an extra second to recover, and the PR interval shortens again, and it starts the cycle over. So this is a subtle example, very subtle example of a second degree type one AV block. And so why is it important to be able to say if it's a second degree type 1 AV block. Well, so these people, their AV node proper is what we said is the anatomical region that is blocked, right? The AV node is what is blocked. So the disease is right there on the AV node. It is not on this bundle of Hiss, right? The bundle of Hiss is healthy in these AV blocks. So, if, if the block of this AV node, if it gets worse to the point where the AV node can't even do anything, right? If we have a complete block, so if it progresses to a complete dysfunction, right? So if this AV node there's complete dysfunction there. So now we know the signal from the SA node can't even get down, right? It will, it'll just get blocked every time. We at least have this bundle of Hiss. And why is that really important? Because the bundle of Hiss can create a junctional escape rhythm, right? It can produce its own depolarization and depolarize the ventricles and keep us alive at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. It's not optimum, but it's possible. So that's why we want to make sure that we see these second degree blocks. We want to say if it's a second degree type one or not, because it's, it makes it you know urgent because if this person's AV block gets worse, we know that in these folks, they have the ability to create these junctional escapes by the Hiss junction. So. That is why we delineate between second degree type one and second degree type two. And so we're gonna talk about type two in the next video. And as you can guess, type two secondary blocks are blocks at a different location within this AV junction. So um, I hope this helps you understand the pathophysiology behind a second degree type one block. And so when you can diagnose it, you can put your finger on exactly where the lesion exists and why that confers different types of treatments. So um, I hope this helps you all kind of understand uh, the physiology of these blocks. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, throw them down to the comments. Um, stay tuned for the next couple videos to come out of um, the next series of AV blocks. So um, take care, have a good rest of your day. We'll see you on the next ECG video.